All right, this is going to be a message to Hebrew Israelite critics and fake ass servants. All right, and I want the title to be that, and I want it to be controversial. I wanted to catch your attention. So at, at the same time, while saying that, my apologies to anybody that may be offended by my use of the word ass. Anyway, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And this lesson is entitled, Message to Hebrew Israelite Critics and Fake Ass Servants. All right, just like that, fake ass servants. Now, there's a lot of people that come on the comment board. And let me say it like this. This truth is for the elect. It's for those who are searching for the you know for the truth of the holy bible you want the real name of the heavenly father and son right and then you're going to do something with it you're not just going to come and just watch a bunch of videos take your damn clipboard and go around and mark you know in your in your profound knowledge which is no knowledge you're going to go around to all the different israelite groups and grade them on how they teach and what they did what they did wrong they didn't do wrong meanwhile you didn't do shit anyway this, this person is servant for the Ancient of Days. And I've had a conversation with him, you know, one or, one or two occasions. I believe this, you know, the second time having a conversation with him. This is the second time right here, but the first time, you know, he left another comment, which just maybe just block him all together. Because when you, what we do is we ask questions on the comment board and we're abrasive on purpose. This is tactics. These are tactics that were taught to us by the apostles of Great Millstone. When you question people on the comment board, we want to see. We're not so much as doing it for face value. We want to see what you know. We want to see what you're going to say. We ask you certain questions and we come at you certain ways so that you, in your zeal or lack thereof, you reveal yourself and we can know who you are because people hide behind avatars. People hide behind names, right? But the real proof is going and seeing do they have any works? Do they have any videos? When did they open their channel up? Who are they watching? These are the real things that prove people. And I said all that to say, when, we, when you come on the comment board and you open yourself up and you criticize or you become a critic yourself, you're opening yourself up also for scrutiny. Be aware of that. So from the, the comment board, this person's servant for the Ancient of Days, right? Who that shows you right there, he's not settled on a name. He don't even know what the name of the father is. He told me his own self, he calls him Ancient of Days so that he don't call him the wrong name. But then he watch a bunch of camps. Well, what the hell are you watching for if you don't believe anybody got the truth or anybody got the true name? But going on, he says, I like that GMS don't teach the lost to call on Jesus. A lot of other camps do, and that's something they need. So like it. And that's something they need to bring out against themselves as Israelites fishermen. So right away, you know this guy. He watches a bunch of different camps. That's already a mark against you because you don't know what's going on. And this is the part of the confusion. So for the brothers and sisters that watch this, you got you to gotta understand, watching them many different camps, you know, it, it should resonate in your mind right away or it should be confirmed in your brain right away. After you watch every camp once or twice, you should start to see who, got the, who it is you should be watching. You Israelite journeymen, and what I mean by journeymen is those who... A journeyman is a person like a guy that's been on different different teams. Like he never settled on one team. You got certain quarterbacks that he went to one team, he didn't fit. He got cut. Went to another team, he didn't fit. He got cut. Went to another team, he didn't fit. He got cut. So he's a journeyman. Never really settling down. You know, like a rolling stone, like the old song goes, right? So this is a guy that's watching a bunch of different camps, but he always has his opinion. So he says, I like that GMS don't teach the lost to call on Jesus, which that's a good thing. A lot of other camps do, and that's something they need to bring out against themselves as Israelite fishermen. Now, I told a guy, and this is from a video that I did, it is the spirit that quickens, not precepts, right? I told him, I said, I mentioned you in this video. You call yourself a servant, yet your page is empty. No videos, no camp, no nothing. Commenting on videos and giving your opinion like some type of critic is played out. And it is played out, and we get tired of that. If you're going to watch the video, you're going to learn. You should be taking notes more than you're making comments if you're trying to learn. But see, Jake, this thing, this social media has ruined these Israelites. It made you feel like your opinion is important. When we teach these videos, we're only on YouTube because 
that's a, a necessary evil for us to get the word of the Lord out. We're not here like other people on YouTube to see your cat go up and down the scratching post or to see your baby take his first steps or so we can have a blog and you can give your opinion of what you think. That's, that's not what we're here for. We're here to give you the message of the word of the Lord. So your, your, your opinion, your critique is really not needed. And you're also here to learn that you will become teachers yourselves or not. And just be damn condemned or whatever Whatever it is, whatever your role is that the Lord is going to give you You see, we're not here to be celebrated and lauded and praised And, and you know, magnified our own selves But the word of the Lord is what receives the magnification And the glorification So I have here Matthew 22 and 9 It says, go ye therefore into the highways And as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage Now, the Israelite men that's watching these videos You're here to receive the, the truth, sure But you're also here to see If the Lord is going to use you in the ministry Right? And if the Lord is not going to use you in the ministry Then your opinion is not also not needed Still not needed We don't need your opinion And you may say Well, he was giving y'all a compliment Why are you going to come in? Because You ain't giving us a compliment You'll understand that Yeah, it is bad when these Israelite groups call Teach people to call on the name Jesus Yeah, that's sure that's bad But also too since you point, hey, like the old saying goes, when you point the finger, five more, four more are pointing back at you. So when you open up your mouth on the comment board, you are subject to scrutiny. He could just easily just watch the videos, take notes, and just be quiet. See that whole thing, making comments and, you know, trying to give your opinion and one-up people and talk shit. All that shit is old. It's played out, man. We're past that now. We're moving, you know. We're going somewhere else with the truth. We ain't here for, for your fucking like, for your approval, your disapproval. We're not here for the approval rating of the world or for the world of Israelites. So you're supposed to go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. You're supposed to be trying to find your place in this ministry, in this truth. Let's look up the word critic. Right? This is from Google. Critic. It says a person who expresses an unfavorable opinion of something. Now that's in the most harshest sense. Because you got people that are movie critics. They go watch a movie to see what they find wrong with it. Right? A food critic go and eat food at different restaurants. He can tell you what's wrong with it. You know, like a, a Chef Ramsay type individual. Definition 2 says a person who judges the merits of literary, artistic, or musical works. Especially one who does so professionally. And you, and you see the meaning of that. What does being a critic mean? A critic is a person who can communicates an assessment and an opinion of various forms of creative works such as art, literature, music, cinema, theater, fashion, architecture, and food. Critics may also take may also take as their subject social or government policy. How can a critic do this because they have experienced themselves in these areas in which they're critiquing? A person with no experience can't be a damn critic. You're new. Jay could tell you, well, I'm new. Why you coming to me, brother? I'm new to you. Shut the fuck up then. If you're new to the truth and you don't even know what's going on yet, right? You don't even know what's going on yet. How can you be a critic? And to a person that doesn't know in his mind is not firmly settled what the name of the father and son are, you definitely don't have enough experience to be saying shit, man. And then you got the name serving on yourself. And I went to the guy's page and examined. He has no works Whatsoever, you just got a, a playlist with a bunch of damn music and takes from Umar Johnson, which you people start watching these other people who themselves are not even awakened. They're not even born again. They don't know the Israelites, nothing. And you start taking their word like they know something. Umar Johnson don't know what the fuck is going on, man. Going on, it says critic definition and meaning. The meaning of critic is one who engages often professionally in the analysis, evaluation, or appreciation of works of art of artistic performances and obviously it's not dealing with you know uh artistic performances or the arts or none of that it's dealing with descriptions but who are the real critics of the scriptures those that are in the truth those that are teaching those that, that have some 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 understanding that's been in it for a while you new people ain't on no level to be no damn critic you're trying to critique based off of your western mentality Based off of what you learned in the hood, what, what Big Mama them taught you, or your, your bitch ass emotions. From dictionary.com, critic says a person who judges, evaluates, or criticizes. And that's what a lot of you do. You criticize. You don't even know what's going on. 
They go back to the old song with Alexander O'Neill. All you want to do is criticize. <laughs> All you want to do is criticize. That old song. <laughs> anyway, it says a person who expresses disagreement with something or disapproval of someone. And that's, that's Jake. Big mouth, always talking, always giving your fucking opinion. Vocabulary.com Critic A critic is someone who finds fault with something And expresses an unfavorable opinion And a lot of you Israelites got this problem You watch all the groups And you go around the earth Like you got a clipboard Like the Lord sent you You ain't got to teach You ain't got to preach You don't got to join the camp You don't got to do nothing Your job is You're going to go critique all the camps that teach You're going to tell them what they're doing wrong Meanwhile you ain't doing shit You ain't doing a thing See and you got to be in the spirit to understand that. Because some of you people in the flesh, you just like, well, he didn't even say nothing wrong with you. Shut the fuck up. You don't got nothing to say. That's, that's, that's why King David said that. And I think it's in Psalm 69. It says, for thou, for thou speak against him, him. How's it go? Uh, they talk to the grief of those whom the Lord has smitten. See, those of us that the Lord put the burden on the priest of gospel, here you come with your mouth talking, talking to grief. You know, we can see through your, your, your comments and your backhanded compliments and all the little different things you say. We can see exactly where you're coming from. We see you from a mile away. And I'm telling you right now, when you see a guy with a servant on his name and he don't do no serving, that person is lukewarm. He just chose a name because it sounded good. Your name should describe who you are. That's It should describe, describe what you are. If you say you a servant, how you a servant and you don't do nothing? Who are you serving? You must be serving, you're serving yourself, right? Anyway, so we got the word critic. I think we got a good understanding of that. Let's read a few scriptures because you put yourself in a, in a, in a bad place. Now, first, I'm going to go to the book of Jude. Because Enoch prophesied about people like this. This is Jude 1 verse 14. It says, And Enoch also, the seven from Adam, prophesied of these. Prophesied of which? It's going to tell you. Saying, Behold, the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints. And that's the angels. And the elect from all times To execute judgment upon all <clears throat> And to convince all that are ungodly among them Of all their ungodly deeds Which they have ungodly committed And of all their hard speeches Which ungodly sinners have spoken against them And if you, if you pick up on some background noise I apologize You know I'm at a I'm at a dealership waiting for the car to get service So you know, I'm making use of some time But there's people around Alright so just Disregard Salakia. Let's read that again To execute judgment upon all And convince all that are ungodly among them Of all their ungodly deeds Which they have ungodly committed And of all their hard speeches Which ungodly sinners have spoken against them And how do you speak You can also speak against the Lord By speaking against the, the people that he sent Talking to the grief Of them who thou Who thou has, has wounded Or smitten I, I can't remember exactly how it's worded I tell you what, let's go to it. Psalms 69. Psalm 69. Just real quick. Uh, <clears throat> right about verse 22. Uh, okay. Psalm 69, verse 26. It says, and we'll start at 25. It says, Let their habitation be desolate. And let none dwell in their tents, for they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those of those whom thou hast wounded. Whatever we going through, we are already wounded and smitten by the Lord. And here you come with your persecuting mouth. And King David was talking about wicked Israelites in this in this chapter. Or in those few verses right there. Going back to it. And, and the same thing here in Jude. Jude was speaking of wicked Israelites. See? And Enoch prophesied about these wicked Israelites. It says, these are murmurers, complainers. You're murmuring and complaining. What's the word murmur, murmur mean? Let's go to it real quick. Strong's G, 1113. Gagustace. 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 Murmurer. What does it say? A murmurer, one who discontentedly complains. And then it says against the Most High. You may say, well, I didn't complain against the Lord. I complained against you, nigga. Well, who you think sent us? Who else, who else other than the Most High would send men to preach the word of the Lord? You think Satan sent men? Go out and preach the word of the Lord now. 
You think one of the false gods from the world sent us to preach with the Holy Bible? It ain't even a book. Who sent us to preach the word of the Lord? The Most High himself. A murmurer, one who discontentedly complains against the Most High. A grumbler, murmurer. See, you're grumbling, murmuring. Let's look it up. Complain about something in a bad tempered way. Make a low rumbling sound. To mutter in discontent, growl, rumble, to express with grumbling. Now that dude did it on a low level, but we can see right through that. He has disapproval of certain things and tactics that we use, and it comes out in a small way. And then on top of that, he's the one going off, watching all them different groups like that. Very unstable. These are murmurers, complainers. What does the word complainers say? And you know what a complaint is. Strong's G, 3202, Memsi Moiras. Memsi Moiras. Memsi right? What does it say? Complaining of one's lot. Quarrelers, discontented. Now, in this case, and the, and the dude probably complained about his lot because in another comment he said, when I got on about why he, his page empty, he said, I'm not a YouTuber. You ain't got to be a YouTuber. Neither are we YouTubers like that. We're servants of the Lord, prophets, preachers, you know, teachers and whatnot, but we use YouTube. We ain't just on YouTube. We ain't got nothing else to do. We're using it to get the word out. He says, uh, and blaming fate, i.e. quarrelous, discontented complainer. And you got, man, there's so many of these different Israelites like this that complain. Let's go to the Good News Translation and see what it says here. Let's go to Jude. And what what verse was that? Around about verse 14. Jude 1 and 14. And it's only one chapter. Jude 1 and 14. It says, It was Enoch, the seventh direct descendant from Adam, who long ago prophesied this about them. The Lord will come with many thousands of his holy angels. Salakia. To bring judgment on all and condemn them all for their godless deeds they have performed and for all the terrible words that godless sinners have spoken against him. These people are always grumbling and blaming others. They follow their own evil desires. They brag about themselves and flatter others in order to get their own way. And obviously that other part really ain't got to do with this guy. I mean, I don't know if you're using this, you know. I didn't even read the second part of the scripture, but it says these are murmurous complainers walking after their own lust and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So the second part, I won't put it on the on that guy, but part of it is him. Murmurous complainers and not just him, but there are many of you like that. You go from comment board to comment board complaining. You leave our comment board as you just learned something and go to one of the other groups that you know we got, you know, uh, a back and forth with and tell them what you don't like about us and you go back to them back to us and tell us what you don't like about them you'll go to the, us and tell us you don't like the way they they saying jesus then you go to them and say you don't like the way we always get on people for not doing videos and it's all the same you know it's not all the same thing but it's, it's it's the spirit of the lord nudging you to check to, ch to uh, check yourself out to keep yourself in check to examine yourself because too much of that shit goes on among you Israelites. So let's read the account now with the Savior, what he said. It says, be in readiness. This is Luke 12, 35. It says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. What's, your, what's, what's that mean? Your lights burning. The lamp is you. The light is you. The light is the gospel, of course. But when it says your lights burning, you're probably burning the oil. These are what the servants do. Don't call yourself a servant if you're not a servant. Just say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Israelite or whatever. Verse 36 says, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants. And the word servant has a very heavy connotation on it. Blessed are those servants. What are they doing? Whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. And watching don't mean you just, you just sitting there looking. No, a watchman does many things. You don't just sit there and look. You watch and you give reports. You give a report of what you see, which a lot of guys got a problem with that. They don't want you to look at articles. They don't want you to go into certain 
certain words so you can break things down better so you can have a better understanding you're supposed to do that the scriptures tell us be not ignorant of any matter or great or small so we're supposed to look into things the scriptures also say study to show ourselves approved rightly dividing the word of truth how are you going to divide the word of truth when it's written in a foreign language or another language right and it's translated to you in your in a language that you speak but you need to go back and see what the original word meant so that you can ascertain what the correct understanding is there's nothing wrong with it and it also in, uh, also includes going into different versions or different uh, translations of the Bible to make it easier to understand. That's all. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Now let's look at the word servant. What does it say? Is it just a word you just throw out there because it sounds cool on, a, on an avatar? Strong's G, 1401, Dulos. 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 And the thing that I said, that we all know, it didn't come from me, I mean, of course. But the thing that I, I spoke it, but it didn't come from me, I'm not taking credit for it. But the thing that the Lord showed us is coming to pass. The elites hired up a lot of different Israelites to give you the illusion of choice so that you would have, you know, you would see all these different, different flavors and you wouldn't be able to contain yourself. You would have to try out some of all of them. Instead of finding the group that's got the real truth, you try to watch them all. I'm going to watch all the groups, you know, because you want to be entertained deep down. Deep down is what you want. You want to be entertained. But when you get the entertainment, you're going to lose the uh, the nutritional aspect of it. You're going to lose the, uh, what's the word, the edification aspect of it. You lose it you're getting all those empty calories from eating and digesting everything that you that you know for for entertainment you, you're doing what eve what eve did she saw something that looked like it was pleasurable to the eyes and she jumped right on it and what wound up happening you wind up wind up going off see you wanted to be wise so the word servant says a slave bondman man of servile condition what is servile brother look it up obsequious having or showing an excessive an excessive willingness to serve or please others and who are you trying to please you're trying to please your how shot indirectly by doing what pleasing the servants by teaching them feeding the sheep of or characteristic of a slave or slaves of or befitting a menial position meaningly or cravenly submissive Whoo, that's heavy See that? So you're you're in a menial position, meaning you're a serve, you're serving. You put yourself to the side and you do something for what? For the purpose of the kingdom of heaven. It says a slave, or really in that sense, for the purpose of your master. A slave, metaphor, one who gives himself up to another's will, those whose service is used by the anointed in extending and advancing his cause among men, meaning what? You give up your own life and you engage in doing the work of the Lord for his sake. All them, you know, all them lofty goals and dreams. You put all that shit aside. One who gives himself up to another's will. Whose will is it? The most high, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in the name of Yahweh Shai. It said, and why you do it? One who gives himself up to another's will. Those whose service is used by the anointed in extending and advancing his cause among men so we extending and advancing the cause of the lord and savior and his father among men by what putting our own lives aside and joining what he wanted us to do see walking among the uh, walking among the uh, seaside choosing out men saying follow me and they left everything and they went right away and followed the lord it goes on devoted to another devoted to another to disregard of one's own interests so if you haven't done that, shut your damn mouth. If you ain't put everything aside to follow the Lord the best you could, you ain't got no business calling yourself no servant. That's just a name. It's just a title for you. He goes on. It says, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if you shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. So when the Lord come, if he find you doing his work, find you involved in his ministry, then you're blessed. 
And if and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. And, the, and that's what's going to happen. He's going to come as a thief in the night. Right now, you in uh in the trial. And it, and it hasn't really heated up to the level that it's going to heat up to. Or let me not say not really. It hasn't heated up to the level that it's going to heat up to. Because this thing is going to get off the hook. Right now, we're in the early stages of the trials of our faith. But wait till Jacob's trouble here. Wait till things start getting taken away. That's why right now you're in the preliminaries. People's minds are being conditioned to do the thing that you're going to to act out to be your mind is being conditioned so that you're going to act out the things that your faith requires or lack thereof in the time of Jacob's trouble for example the guys that are teaching that the MOTB is not the chip and the people that's following them they're preconditioning themselves to take the damn chip they're convincing themselves you know that you can repent from it so that way when they wind up taking the shit they're going to feel good about it at first initially but by the time they really realize or understand that you can't repent or you can't get it out, because how the hell are you going to be able to repent from taking the mark of the beast when you still got the shit? How, how is that going to occur? You're going to let these, them, these damn devils put the chip in your ass, and then you're going to say you can repent from it. But how are you going to repent when you still got the damn chip stuck in you? Because your tendon is going to wrap around that shit. It's going to grow within you. It's going to stay in you. You ain't going to dig in your hand and get it out. Times ain't going to be like they are now. You're going to be in a time where you ain't going to have medical care. You're not going to have access to clean water and food and, and all types of devices and utensils that you got access to. Now, we're going, we're going to be going from place to place. Who knows what it's going to be like? Like, you know, really? You could be in the wilderness. You mean to tell me you're going to be out in the wilderness. You done took the devil chip. Now you're going to dig in your hand with a stick. <laughs> you're going to dig in your hand with a stick and get the chip out. We're going to a time where if you get wounded, you might bleed out before you get damn medical attention. You sound like a fool. And you haven't really given it thought to exactly what you really, what you know and what you don't know. You haven't really given it thought. You haven't considered what this time coming is going to be like. But back to the original point, you people are preconceiving yourselves to carry out the things that you're going to do when the time comes. Most of you people we see, you're going to take that damn mark of the beast. And you go and you you know listening to your leaders, listen to these little upstarts, and they themselves gonna take that shit too, because you can't you can't you really you can't see a time where all this convenience and all this luxury you can't see a time where you're not gonna be a part of that. But that's what the kingdom of heaven is is that's coming. Jacob's trouble is gonna be about that. Learning how to get through on faith, and most of you don't have faith. That's why you gonna you gonna wind up losing. But it's all good. Let's keep going. So verse 41, it says, Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? That's another word, steward. Because what is a steward? It's one who's left in authority of something that's not theirs, but to look after. We'll get the definition. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Let's go to the word steward. In the Greek. Strong's G 3623. Akoinamas. 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 Steward, right? And it says what? The manager of household or of household affairs. So when you come across this truth and it's imparted into you, the Lord is giving you a portion of his truth as a steward. And what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to take it and do something with it. It says, especially. A steward, manager, superintendent, whether freeborn or as was usually the case, a free man or a slave, which the word slave going right back to servant, to whom the head of the house or proprietor has entrusted the management of his affairs. You take your car, like now I'm getting the car service, getting the oil changed, done and all that. You get them the keys, you tell them to go get the oil changed, you change the oil. They go and they put fucking antifreeze in your oil and the car mess up, now it's on them. So they have to be very careful. And, and what, how they're going to take what you gave them Same thing with us The Lord entrusted us his gospel His ministry He ain't down here doing it He's in the heavens So he left it with who? He left it with the, the servants The stewards His slaves To do his bidding And we got to do it the way that he says Going on the heels of what Apostle Gabbard was just talking about Right? That spirit is back back now Getting on brothers we get, and, and every one of us We all got to dig in deep 
We got to be more sharp. We got to study more. We got to read more. We got to bring out more lessons of edification other than, the, you know, the layup and the slam dunk lessons where you just get the nigga woman on camera doing gang signs, little dumb shit. Because really, when I do videos like that, sometimes, you know, you make those because they're easy to make. But really, man, I, I, we really value this, the videos where you're going into to, to more deep things. Prophecy is what's, what's important. Not what the fucking nigga woman crow doing. Who gives a shit? And, I, and I'm saying that for my own self, getting on my own self. I want to know these, these, these bitches more. I want to know these people of the word more and dig into the word of the Lord. It goes on, it says, the care of receipts and expenditures and the duty, right here, the care of receipts and expenditures and the duty of dealing out the proper portion to every servant and even to the children not yet of age. So we got to look over the sheep, look over the flock, the congregation, right? The expenditures, the receipts, all of that. All that's on our plate. Not just walk around the earth giving our fucking opinion and critiquing. We ain't critics like, well, we critique one another and we do criti crit critique and criticize and rebuke other groups. But then we got the experience to do it. Some nigga with no salt in the game, no skin in the game, ain't never did nothing. You just hashed out of the Israelite egg a week ago. Now you ready to tell everybody what they doing wrong. Like I said, like you the most high personal assistant. You walk around with a clipboard grading everybody else. And a lot of you do that. It says the manager of a farm or landed estate, an overseer, the superintendent of the city's finances. You know, going on, it says metaphor, the apostles and other Christian teachers and bishops and overseers, which it should say Israelite. The apostles, the elders, the brothers, the big brother, the elder bishops, right? The teachers and whatnot. So you get the idea. We don't need to read more on that. So that's a steward. Verse 43 says, Blessed is that servant. He called him a steward, but he also says servant. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he findeth, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's, men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. And when you go against the men that's teaching and you open your mouth up and you critique and you beating the men's servants. Right? And when you bring them other doctrines, you be, you're, getting, you're beginning to eat and drink and to be drunken. It says, what's going to happen? The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware of and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now, Stay right there because when you go to the precept and you read this same verse, here it says, and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Okay? Now, if we go over here to Matthew 24, I believe it is. And it says right here in verse 50. Let's, you know, let's actually read it here. And you know what? I'm going to have to go back and read that whole thing. Just hold on here. It says, what the Lord going to do? And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So you're called an unbeliever. You're going to get the same portion as an unbeliever. You might say, well, I still believe in you, Lord, but you didn't do what he told you to do. Your actions speak louder than words. But when you don't do what the Lord tells you to do, that's your likening to an unbeliever. It says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more so hey you as a elder possible bar brought out we servants of the lord we in the truth the lord gave us a lot he requires a lot and ain't no two ways about it you can't get out of it we all got to do it so let's read the precept because the other one called him unbeliever but this one calls you something different matthew 24 45 who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, 
the law of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of he's going to come suddenly upon you and shall cut him asunder and upon him his portion with the hypocrites so here it didn't say with the unbelievers but we know that if you're an unbeliever or if you're a hypocrite you are an unbeliever there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth so finishing off the lesson back in matthew 24 51 uh back in verse 50 it says the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour when he is that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and upon him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and that's the whole thing the lord is going to regard you as an unbeliever and you're a damn hypocrite all of you fake ass servants of the lord and you hebrews like critics the lord ain't dealing with you and here's a here's a parting salvo a two-piece for you this is proverbs 6 and 10 and we start at verse 9 it says how long will thou sleep o slugger will thou arise out of thy sleep yet a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands of sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an unarmed man. Okay? And that goes into what? You're not doing the work. You're being a damn slugger. The slugger is a lazy person. If you go right here to the word slugger, and we look it up. A lazy, sluggish person. A habitually lazy person. And in this case, you got a lot of Israelites that all they want to do is give their fucking opinion. And they, it's because you're lazy. At the end of the day, you don't have the spirit on the, of the Lord on you. It's, it's impossible that a man would have the spirit of the Lord on him, the Holy Spirit to teach and you be able to overpower the spirit of the Lord. You just can't do it. Neither can you want out of your own want to do lessons and the spirit of the Lord don't give you the utterance. You can't overpower to do lessons either because they're not going to come out right. So we understand it, but it's still our job to do what the Lord put on us to do. And he put us, you know, put us up to teach and feed the sheep, but also too to call out your fake ass servants. And you Hebrews are like critics. This is Proverbs 24, 33. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. What do you do when you're folding your hands? You sit back in your beach chair, your lounge chair with your hands folded. You lay back in your cot, taking a damn nap. You slumbering. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an unarmed man. And there's another one that says, hold on here. Maybe we just read it. Let's see. Let's see here. It says, yeah, well, you know, Proverbs 20 and 4. It says the slugger, the sluggish, lazy ass person will not plow by reason of the cold. What do you plow? This is the Lord's field. You're supposed to pick up the plow, plow in the Lord's field, right? Go into the vineyard. See, do the work. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. And what is the harvest? The harvest is the end of the world. So if you beg and have nothing, that means the Lord going to destroy you. He's going to leave you here. He's going to melt you. So, you know, that's pretty much it. It's irritating to constantly come in contact with people all they do is critique or complain or be damn critics of the hebrew israelites when they themselves won't even lift a finger they won't do shit all they do is complain they got all the answers you know they got all the answers to what what we should be doing no you should be uh, uh also adding in where's 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 your brick where are you doing trying to trying to help build a house you know build the uh the, the, the house of david if you want to say it that way anyway that's it brothers just straight 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 to the point i mean i, I kind of you know took a little bit of time to go into it and i want to say a lot more but that's good enough all praise to you how about shimmy how shy shalom